Okay, welcome to the Norseman Media Room. Ailey, you are two times winner of the Keltman X Tri Tour Race, and you're here at Norseman having qualified at Keltman. So, welcome. How is it to be here? Ah, oh, it's amazing to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Putting a bit of pressure on me there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's incredible to be here in Norway. What an amazing place. Um, unbelievable scenery. Just, um, yeah, grateful and uh, looking forward to Saturday, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come on to Norseman, but we need to talk about your Keltman successes because Keltman, I mean, being from the UK myself, I've not done the race myself, but I've heard about how tough it is. So how did you come to compete in Keltman? So Keltman is a race which means quite a lot to our family. Uh, my sister Siobhan did it and won it in, I think, 2015. Um, and, and then my parents bought a house on the West coast of Scotland in a place called Gearlock, which is on the cycle route. And during COVID, uh, well, my, my dad got in to do the race in, in 2020, uh, 2020, it was meant to be. And then obviously we all know what happened in 2020. So the race got postponed to 2021. And at that point I had kind of decided, oh, I quite like, you know, to do something a bit different. I bought a secondhand bike in 2020 and I started joining my dad on some of his cycles. He was beating me. I found it quite hard to keep up at first. Um, and then one thing led to another, another and seven weeks before the race in 2021, a few slots came available and I was desperate to give it a crack. I love mountain running. Um, just being in the hills and uh, I had done training, I guess, uh, although I don't call it training, just adventuring, being outside. And so, yeah, I got a spot and um, it went not so bad and then decided, oh, I have to come. Forgot about the pain, <laughs> how much it hurt. Signed up again to do it in 2022. Um, and then, yeah, now I'm here. So, I mean, it's been a a very quick journey. Last year was my first triathlon. The Catman was my first ever triathlon. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and now we're here. So start of it all, it's been a bit crazy, but, uh, I just love these type of types of events, especially Keltman. It's just got an unbelievable feel. It's just such a family event and um, it, it means a lot to our family as well. So I love that place of Scotland, side of Scotland as well. It's just incredible. The scenery is amazing. So tell us a bit more about the Keltman course, because I think to have such an amazing family love for that part of the world. And you hold the record now for the women's race for the high and the low finish. So tell us a bit about those two <laughs> two different races. Yeah, so the course is epic. I mean, that word is used a lot this 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 time, you know, everybody uses it for everything, but I think we can really say that about Keltman. Uh, the, it starts with a 3.4K swim, jelly, jellyfish infested water. Oh. <laughs> so in 2021, there was like no jellyfish. Uh, and I think I was just lured into a false sense of security, but oh my goodness, the jellyfish were back with vengeance this year. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Like I, you just can't describe it unless you've seen it. I had never seen anything like that. Nor, and if I hadn't been doing the race, I'd been like, get me out of here <laughs> right now. Um, then the cycle goes on, um, amazing West coast road, so a main road for Scotland. So the road surface isn't too bad. Nothing compared to the roads here in Norway, but yeah, it's, it's not so bad. It got a few hills, um, and, and it's a 200 K bike course, but the weather is, is what really makes count man, count man. And the, the, the wind on the bike this year was just absolutely brutal. And traditionally there's a, the last 40 K of the bike is uh, a headwind. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough bike, but, but you could maybe look at the elevation and think, ah, oh, it's not so bad. And then you try and do it when it's gale force winds and you're falling off your bike. <laughs> it's, it's a bit ch more challenging. And then the run is what makes Countman what it is. So the high course, which is just iconic is um, a, a, a great uh, kind of 17 kilometer trail to start with where they bring you on, you think, oh, it's just a Land Rover track trails. It's straightforward. And then all of a sudden you have to go veer left on this path. That's not even a path. It's like some random bog and it's for three kilometers <laughs> and you're going up this random bog and you're thinking, is this race not hard enough anyway? So if anybody's thinking about doing Countman, the first part of the run, it's not flat and it's not on Land Rover tracks. <laughs> and it gets 
gets me every time I do it. Why, Stuart, why did you put this in the race? It's hard enough as it is. Um, just to make it a bit harder, I guess. <laughs> um, and then Ben A, which is um, one of my favorite mountains in Scotland. It's an incredible beast of a mountain. Uh, three kilometers, you climb a thousand meters. It's not running, it's scrambling up the side of a hill. It, uh, and then you've got quite technical terrain at the top of the hill. And then you come to Morrison's Gully, which if anybody's seen pictures of Countman or videos of Countman, you'll know the what I'm talking about. Basically, a large sand dune with big boulder rocks that you have to get down after doing the swim. <laughs> cycle and half of the run already um and then you it, it it opens up to the lock and you've got a amazing triple buttress rock face um and then 8k road finish which is ugh, is what it is uh, you have to get to the finish but uh yeah benny just totally epic and then if the weather's too bad and you can't do benny it's not the easy course. They say this, they always say it's not the easy course. It's the low course. And yes, this year I can tell you it was not the easy course. It was <laughs> the low course, um, which takes you through the Glen um, and you go up kind of towards Bene and then you go through past a mountain called uh, Liach and um, another mountain called Ben Alligan and just pretty technical terrain, but just immense. Just it's um, the middle of nowhere, wild wilderness it's incredible an amazing race I can see you love it like the passion for that race just shines out of you which is wonderful but I want to ask you about um something you said earlier um which is that you don't train you adventure and there's a quote on your Instagram page which I'll read to you if you don't mind but you say um to be outside is to be free and I love that tell me a little bit more about that ethos yeah I just think that if you're going to do these events you really have to love it you will have to want to be outside when it's freezing and it's windy and it's cold and you have to enjoy the challenge because otherwise oh the training would just I don't do these zone one zone two zone three I go out and I look at a hill and I go oh, I want to run up that hill and that's what gives me life it gives me energy I think putting data uh, behind things or numbers behind things I don't have a power meter on my bike rarely look at the pace that I run at um it just makes everything so much more enjoyable sometimes I run faster up the hill sometimes I don't it depends how I, I feel I think that I'm way more in tune with my body than I used to be because of of this mentality everything's so much more enjoyable if I don't want to do something at the uh, at the end of the day, then I'll have a beer instead. Uh, <laughs> I've got a job. I've got no coach, but I love being outside and I love being in the hills. And when you strip everything back and you're just there on your own with incredible scenery and you're not thinking about distance, time, elevation. Oh, I like I like elevation as a number. So I'll <laughs> let that one go. But that's when you really like feel alive. And I think is when you feel the most kind of wholesome, every other problem in your life is just so insignificant when you are in these amazing places with your heart thumping, that's, oh, you're working hard, your heart's thumping, you're out of breath. There we go, you're working hard. Um, and I know that if, if, I, if, if I tried to do these kind of things a different way, ugh, it wouldn't be for me. So, you know, it maybe I'm I'm not fulfilling my potential with that attitude, but it's an attitude that makes me happy and makes me want to come back for the next thing. Because the most important thing is finishing the adventure and being excited for the next one. Yeah, with a smile on your face. Absolutely. So, were you smiling when you did your recce of the Norseman course here in <laughs> Ifjord, Gauss to top? And I know you've been having a little look at it. So, so what's your feeling? Ah, it's a monster. <laughs> what am I doing here? It's a beautiful <laughs> monster. <laughs> <laughs> of course of course of course I mean the scenery is unbelievable it's amazing it's like Scotland on steroids um it, it, I I it's gonna be tough it's not to be underestimated um it's definitely a lot to take in but you know what break I'm gonna break it down into small chunks stay in the moment be present such a privilege to be here to 
to be able to do this race. Uh, well, it's not a race, it's survival. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. It's an adventure. It, it's multiple adventures all, all together, to be honest. Um, so yeah, Saturday will be survival. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, amazing, but it's definitely not something to be underestimated. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any bits of the course that you're especially looking forward to either because they look amazing or because they're a challenge i guess the easy one to say is zombie hill but there's a lot to do before you get that to that point um many people when they think of norse man they probably only think of zombie hill but um the swim oh, hopefully the swim will take care of itself i can swim I'm, I'm sure that one will be okay. Although now I've said that probably one that will go wrong, but, um, but I mean, the, the bike is, is really, is, it's, it's pretty hilly. It's either up or down, um, pretty exposed. So I'm sure it'll be very windy at places. Um, but I guess zombie hill. Yeah. The race starts at zombie hill race. Yeah. It's not a race, but, um, hopefully by that point I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be, I was going to say, hopefully I'll have something in my legs. I mean, let's be honest, is it, <laughs> will I? I think at that point I'll be um, really kind of just focusing on one step in front of the other and having to dig deep, remembering all the things that I have kind of done to that point to get me there. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Am I looking forward to it? I'm looking forward to girls at the top and the waffle at the top. <laughs> ah, the waffles at the top. See, I've been boring people with this, but every year I've been to Norseman, um, I've always been too busy working on the media crew at the top to enjoy a waffle. And I got so close one year because someone was in the queue to get me one and then we had to go. So this year, oh, you have to get. One. I will join you for a waffle at the top. Well, if you haven't got one by the time I get up there, then. Well, if I get up there, that's the aim. Hopefully I will get there. <laughs> um, and a beer as well after that. That would be very good. <laughs> Always. I love your attitude. It's so refreshing. And if you don't mind me asking, Norsemen are really kind of keen at the moment to try and encourage more women and especially more young women to come and compete in these races. So what is your advice for anyone that's sitting at home thinking, could I be like that? Could I do that? I think it starts small for me. Like it, it was, I bought a second hand bike two years ago off Gumtree and I joined my dad for cycles, 30 kilometers to start with. And then everything just kind of got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And I think what I would say is don't judge yourself by what anybody else is doing because you can make an adventure however big or small you want to be. I still, I have trails beside uh, where I work and sometimes I'll go for a half an hour run and find a new trail. I'm like, yeah, that was an adventure. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I did something new and I kind of, it was exhilarating. So don't let anybody else kind of tell you what an adventure should be or what you should be doing or what you shouldn't do be doing. If you like, if you think that you can do it, then you go girl, you can do it. And uh, just, just believe, I think I'm really lucky. I've got an incredibly supportive family um, who never bat an eyelid when I say, yeah, I'm going to go and do that. Most of the time, in fact, pretty much all of the time on my own. Um, I'm single. It's a shout out there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not, I'm not using this. As a, um, but so pretty much everything I do on my own and, um, you know what? I, I, I love it. There's something about when you do something on your own, it's almost more, I want to say amazing. You get a different type of feel when you do it with other people. Yeah. I love having a chat and being social as well, but when you do something on your own, it gives you that kind of extra boost. Wow. I did that on my own. I didn't need anybody else to tell me to do that. I got up and I, and I went for it. I also have many audible books, which I love listening to. Um, normally random stories, nothing to do with kind of anything factual. Um, so, but yeah, if, if you, if you really, if you know, if you're sitting at home and thinking, can I do this? Well, yeah, you can. Cause you just thought you could. So, you know, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I love that. That's brilliant. And of course, the next step for you is your job is bringing you to live in Norway. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of you over here. Yeah. So I'm moving to Stavanger 
on Monday. <laughs> um, first day at my new job is on Monday. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how I'll be walking on Monday, <laughs> but yeah, um, moving to Stavanger for six months, and then and then we'll see what happens after that. But it's uh, an amazing country. I can't wait to get out and explore. I'm just super excited uh, for for new routes and new places. The scenery is just ah wow. <laughs> Oh, well, it's been really wonderful to talk to you and really refreshing. And thank you for sharing all your stories and advice. And we're going to look forward to sharing a waffle and a beer with you at the top of Gauss to Toppen on Saturday, hopefully. Good luck yeah. with your race. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.